So, no, we're no, proud no. of you. We like that girl. She's sassy. Well, thank you, Grandma. She is very sassy. You yeah. know, she's from the South. She's from, uh, from oh, South Carolina. I'm from Texas. Yes, I know you are. I, know I you hope are. you should know that. <laughs> yes, of course I do. I'm from, sorry. I'm yeah. from Iowa. We went up back to Hogsback. And welcome back. This is Rock Hard Caucus, episode 88. I'm here with Evan and Stella and Natalie, and we're going to talk about politics. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of the premises of the show, so... That's, that's the <laughs> show! <laughs> Our hands are tied. <laughs> Returning to one of the subjects that... Made us famous. Yeah, yeah it's our yeah. bread and butter, baby. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that and sugar daddy stories, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was uh, sweating as I edited that episode. <laughs> <laughs> if you are not a Patreon subscriber, you should subscribe just to listen to our most recent episode and imagine the Justin you know and love attempting to edit <laughs> listening to us talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> the wide consensus I've heard is that your um, the message you had to put out instead of playing an actual clip was <laughs> like so adorably nervous. Um, it was so nervous. He's so it's comfortable. Palpable. Yeah, <laughs> it's Just adorable. <laughs> There literally wasn't a clip that was appropriate enough to. <laughs> oh, man, I haven't listened to that. I got to get around to it. Yeah. You really do. Usually the teasers are not uh, extra content, but I recorded something extra special for that one. Well, the uh, the primaries were last week. And uh, did anybody here vote? Did you guys vote? I oh, voted. Yes. Oh, yeah. Online. Yeah. I voted, unfortunately. Wow, I'm the only pure... A good leftist <laughs> not voting. <laughs> yeah, that's what makes you a good leftist. <laughs> that's right. That's my ideology. <laughs> it felt pretty useless even going to do it. Like, no one I voted for. I filled in three boxes. Did well. Did you? Yeah. Yeah. I refuse to vote for anyone who's running on a post. Like, yeah. get out of here. No. <laughs> Yeah, when I was looking at the statewide results, um, I believe it was 168 unopposed races throughout the state. So, uh, very exciting stuff. <laughs> <laughs> As everyone knows, I run, won my race for mm -hmm. yes. Representative House District 35 or 36. I don't remember which one's me and which I believe it was Jaylen. 35. <laughs> 35, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> to represent you house district 35 <laughs> i got 37 votes so pretty proud of that um and i like thank you to sean the Bagman man for an excellent race <laughs> he um, ran a good and, race yeah, yeah i hope i hope he tries for office again someday <laughs> he, he really gave me a good run but i'm really excited to be representing you at the state house yeah I led a uh, grassroots write-in <laughs> effort to unseat Rob Sand. I had so many people, like, apropos of nothing, say that they voted for you for auditor. It was so weird. <laughs> everyone, something, everyone yeah. was just like, we're going to I was going to say, did you run, Justin, or did uh, you get <laughs> you get forced into... Yeah. You were drafted. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I didn't, I didn't organize that ahead of time. People just started doing it. <laughs> That's I what I, I, I mean say, by grassroots. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, it Stella, just, go ahead. It just grows out of the ground with any kind of without any kind of nurturing or I was just gonna say I was, you know, I had to follow my heart and I just thought that Mavis Nipper ran a better campaign. <laughs> I I had to vote for her over you in that race, but hopefully no hard feelings. Well you gotta let this mother you gotta let that mother run this mother. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well said. I'm going to have to pay a licensing fee for you saying that on the show now. Oh, no. <laughs> you can cut it. It's fine. <laughs> can you imagine if we did every time we said that? <laughs> it's such a fun phrase to say. I mean, it would be really disappointing. Yeah. <laughs> so the the really the only race that I cared about at all was Jalen's, and I couldn't vote in that one, so I was like, 
why bother, you know? I am pretty happy about Kimberly Graham. That's cool, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, all prosecutors are bastards. And so she is to be regarded with suspicion. Yeah. That being mm-hmm. said, um, at least we got someone who claims to be a reformist instead of yeah. the fucking frothing psycho freaks who are running against her. Yeah. Who are like <laughs> posting mm-hmm. like war on drugs ads in the year of our Lord 2022. <laughs> <laughs> about wow. the, the dangers of like yeah yeah d- dangers <laughs> of suburban stupid, des moines so. <laughs> like <laughs> they brought back willie horton to <laughs> oh my god cops are dying left and right because there's fentanyl in the air so <laughs> um but i was pretty happy about that I saw a name come up that I hadn't seen in a while, uh, Brecklin Carey. Do you remember that episode? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The prosecutor who uh, ran the trial against Andrea Sahori. Yeah. Uh, she was uh, apparently like, or I don't know, I think Gavin Aronson posted it, but she, Laura Rowe posted her, sorry, <laughs> my apologies, <laughs> Gavin. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but, uh, she posted her condolences or her, whatever her, uh, condolences. Res- condolences. Sorry, the I lost. Concession. <laughs> concession. Hey, yes. She wouldn't be the only one. Thank you. Apologies <laughs> for losing. <laughs> oh, Gabe apologized for oh losing. Gosh. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was a weird. Uh, she should weird. apologize. That would be <laughs> that was a weird uncomfortable. One. I'm yeah. so sorry that I disappointed you. It was like, <laughs> Oh my Just gosh. real weird, such weird vibes. I don't know. I don't like it at all. <laughs> yeah, but but Roan, uh, the she was basically the incumbent for the Polk County attorney. Like, not really the incumbent, but the handpicked uh, successor of what was the previous Sarcone? Is it Sarcone yeah, yeah. or Sarconi? Because I never see it, hear it. I only read it. Whatever. Yeah. It sounds like a Batman villain. Exactly. Like yeah. Sarconi yeah. is more fun to say. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It sounds like Falcone. The crime family. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sarconi crime family. <laughs> yeah, Graham will definitely be an improvement over the the guys who aggressively pursued prosecution against journalists for covering protests. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And it's like she won by a lot, so it's a pretty like resounding like middle finger to all of them, which I like too. But I still think you should just simply be a public defender if you're a good person. But mm. that's fine. It's yeah. fine. Happy for her. Happy for her. I, I, she just is going to be under a lot of pressure from yeah. the police and yeah other parties. <laughs> and like if you look at what just happened with Chesa Budin in uh, San mm-hmm. Francisco. And uh, Larry Krasner is about to get the same shit in uh, Philly, right? Philadelphia? I believe so. Yeah. So they're going after the uh, the progressive yeah. uh, DAs and stuff. There was a recall election for Chesa Budin. I see. Mm-hmm. I love, yeah, the California, yeah, the recall elections in California are always hilarious because it's like, it's a bunch of like wealthy liberals teaming up with Republicans to get rid mm-hmm. of the like one leftist person in their government. <laughs> Anyone yeah, who can make disgusting. any progress. Yeah. It's gross. So, like, she's, like, inherently sus for wanting the job in the first place, but it could be worse. So, that was good. Yeah. Kimberly Graham, come on, $20. She doesn't charge protesters. <laughs> doesn't charge protesters. She says she claims she will not prosecute illegal abortions. Or drug-related offenses, right? She's, like... Or possession offenses. Yeah. 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 So we'll see. We'll see. I'm just like suspicious of anyone who wants to do that. But like rightfully so. It's there's reasons to be optimistic. Yeah, definitely. Um the uh the Johnson County supervisors race, uh, I was not invested in that one. Uh <laughs> featuring a uh, former endorsement receiver <laughs> <laughs> from us <laughs> we should post like we are deeply sorry to everyone who believed in us and supported us <laughs> I hope that I can regain your trust yeah well he's more of a disappointment than anything uh, yeah. actively horrible at least but, I know but I the mean, Rock debatably. Hard Caucus like endorsement is so coveted oh, like true. it means so yeah. much to so many people like to get out the vote <laughs> the few the proud <laughs> yeah. and then to very few endorsements disappoint us yeah i yeah. guess I, I forgot what we did to read a heart i forgot about that <laughs> whole, whole fiasco <laughs> 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 
just did like low key tank her campaign. Did she <laughs> lose by like six votes? And you told yeah. like literally six people not to vote for her. <laughs> well, it wasn't like that. It was just that we we shined a light on her like political career so far, and we have more than six listeners. So. <laughs> But uh, John ended up winning without our endorsement this time. So I guess the incumbent factor overcame the lack of podcast endorsement. (laughs) It's a one-to-one thing. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, we haven't really discussed him on the show at all because it's sort of a a source of anxiety (laughs) for me. (laughs) (laughs) You're having a rough week, Justin, in terms of like, Anxiety caused by the podcast. <laughs> That's <laughs> kind of true. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Last week's episode was pretty weird, like very out of the box for what we usually do. You know, like uh, interviewing someone that is not my best friend, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you did great. It was it was a really interesting and I thought like you kept it collegial. Yeah. Um, I don't think people yeah. are going after him too hard either. After it came out, which I didn't want to like just throw someone under the bus. <laughs> you <Yeah. know? laughs> uh, but anyway, John, I mean, the main the main reason in, in case you haven't followed his uh, his like half term after the special election. Basically, the reason he is a disappointment is that he voted for like four hundred thousand dollars to the sheriff's department for new body cams, which is he voted for more money than most of the board of supervisors voted for. He was, like, pushing for even more than they gave them, which is, like, the total opposite (laughs) of what you said you wanted when you were running. So, I don't know, pretty bad. He took all the abolition language off of his website. exactly. Super concessionary to, like, the other supervisors. Mm -hmm. And they don't even like him. Like, he's not Mm -hmm. getting anything out of it. And it's just, like, the stark contrast between how Indira has had to serve on the on the city council and like the approach that she's had versus what what he ended up doing just yeah. really stark contrast yeah i mean indira is like the gold standard but like fuck dude like come on not even <laughs> not even the silver standard <laughs> all hat no cattle <laughs> <laughs> okay phil hemingway <laughs> <laughs> you know the the truck that he drives by when he's running for office has like that he like decorates it really makes some solid points yeah. I'm, I'm not saying i'm i'm gonna vote for him but i am listening <laughs> oh. he he is running again right in the general he runs every yeah, time yeah. every yeah, fucking oh yeah 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 I just confirmed that with this Press Citizen article, uh, the Republicans selected Phil Hemingway and Jamie Bradshaw <laughs> for the uh, general election this fall for the county supervisors. Good luck to them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, anyway, I mean, th- w- when he ran for the special election, he had this like abolitionist kind of stuff in his platform. Like he called out Iowa Freedom Riders specifically as people that need to be listened to by local government and then removed all of that for his re-election so i mean it, it's not a good look at the very least like some would say maybe you were just using us <laughs> some might say <laughs> <laughs> yeah we're not upset about it we're fine <laughs> <laughs> well there, there was one candidate in that race that was uh definitely the worst of the three seth zimmerman he was uh super pro cop actually yeah and this article from the press citizen about the results of that election i had just one little zimmerman quote here that i thought was very funny zimmerman said he was disappointed his campaign didn't secure one of the two seats on the board of supervisors but he was particularly surprised by how many votes one of his opponents received (laughs) and this is a direct quote from seth I was surprised at how well the incumbent did without doing much for campaigning. So that was a struggle and a hard pill to swallow. <laughs> <laughs> That's I mean, pretty funny. It's true. It's true. Like, it's, he really didn't do very much. <laughs> it's so funny to get, like, third and there's two seats. 
So it's like not even like three people competing for one seat. It's like almost everyone but you got one. You're the only loser. Yeah. yeah. If you, I mean, one loser. If you're like a, a good, you know, Iowa City, Johnson County Democrat who dutifully do- votes with Democrat every cycle, like I'm sure – like, John won. He was endorsed by Bernie Sanders, you know, mm-hmm. for the last special election. I'm sure people aren't paying attention very closely the way that we do to yeah. what, it's, mm-hmm. what it's actually been like with him in office. So yeah. I'm sure that helped him get into office again. Like, oh, yeah, I heard he was good last time. I'll go it ahead and It wasn't very again. long ago. So no. yeah. it makes right. perfect yeah. sense, really. Yeah. Uh, you want to talk about the Eddie Morrow stuff? That was pretty funny. Yeah. <laughs> I like it a lot. It makes me really happy. <laughs> so, uh, in District 30... Which is south, south Side Des Moines. Yes. Eddie Morrow was running against uh, Megan Srinivas, House District 30. And, well, let me just read from this KCCI article that sort of goes over the controversy. <laughs> Several Democratic groups are calling on a Des Moines candidate to drop out of the race. Eddie Morrow is running against Megan Srinivas to represent Iowa House District 30, which includes the south side of Des Moines. There have been growing calls for Morrow to drop out after accusations that his campaign is intimidating and doxing Srinivas. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, The Iowa Unity Coalition published a release calling on him to suspend his campaign and the post reads in part eddie morrow has a long sordid history of attacking women with his campaigns and now his tactics have gone too far with doxing bullying and intimidating women uh do you do we remember all of his previous campaigns i know he ran for senate in uh Mm -hmm. 2020 right something like that i kind of live on the south side but uh i'm like right on the dividing line so I had to not vote for Tony Bisignano, who is one of the worst representatives, and or at least one of the dem- worst Democrats in, in the House. He was he was unopposed, right? Yes. Yeah. Let's see what all he's run for. I, I only became aware of him uh, when he was running in the Senate primary in 2020, but he also ran uh, for House in 2018, and for iowa house again in 2016 okay yeah i do vaguely recall the senate campaign and i'm pretty sure his big pitch was that he was a small business owner i think we briefly yeah. like talked about it on the podcast he has a ukraine flag in his twitter handle <laughs> it's eddie j morrow ukraine flag hashtag stand with women <laughs> stand with oh, women? okay wow someone who stands with women can't hate women he's beating the allegations <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, he he does tend to run against women if we want to <laughs> if we want to establish a pattern here in 2016. Well, that's not sexist to like. <laughs> yes, it is. To yes, some people, it is. I'm gonna go after that sick gazelle that <laughs> that that woman. Oh he targets gosh. specifically weak seeming candidates. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's what this the statement from the Unity Coalition seems to be saying, though, is that he has a history of like specifically campaigning hard against women that he's running against. <laughs> has he ever won office? No. <laughs> I am obsessed with chronic losers. Like yeah. we got Beto, we got Monica Vernon in Cedar Rapids. <laughs> yeah. Who's just running for she won <laughs> a city council once. But yes. it's just people who run over and over and over and it doesn't matter what office mm-hmm. it's yeah. for. They just want to be anything elected and yeah. they never mm-hmm. can. People who have more money than charisma. <laughs> kind of like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like a huge margin. Yeah. Triple M was a chronic loser yeah. until the yeah, little engine true. could. Eventually yeah. you might break through. <laughs> she beat the odds. Uh, but Eddie ran against Joe Oldson in 2016. Joe Oldson is a woman. Thanks Just for clarifying. To make, to make that clear. Because <laughs> Joe could be a man's name also. Oh, um, oh yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Uh, and he ran against uh, Axne in 2018. She's also a woman. Mm-hmm. And then in the 2020 primary, he was uh, running against both Teresa Greenfield and Kimberly Graham, two women. There were also men in that race. 
including <laughs> Mike Franken. <laughs> yep. <laughs> who's made a comeback. <laughs> <laughs> and then now this last one uh losing against megan serena voss yeah so it sounds like he posted her 2012 voter registration yes the doxing show, yeah mm-hmm. to show that she registered as a republican a while back mm-hmm. um but it included her address and then people started showing up at her her home yeah well this the address that was on the voter registration that they posted was i think an an address in ames it was an old address Mm, either way she didn't live there anymore and it was one of his well it's kind of unclear what this guy was for the campaign because he started sort of hiding (laughs) after people (laughs) were getting mad at him (laughs) Hmm. but like so some campaign worker of his posted this registration as a kind of gotcha like oh megan was registered republican 10 years ago which i mean hey it's it's not something. T- I mean, you can bring it's it up. It's not irrelevant. Pop- yeah, sure. Right. But- don't post her address though. Yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> or phone number. Or I think they- didn't it have part of her social on it too? <laughs> yeah, oh, I thought it had her social on it too. You can just simply tell people she registered as a Republican. That's information. Yeah. You don't have to actually post someone's social security number to say that. <laughs> and this is where you can find her from nine o'clock until five o'clock yeah, Monday yeah. through Friday. Yeah. <laughs> Yikes! And well, their defense was that this was uh, this voter registration form was found in like a public database, so anyone could have seen it without them posting it. I mean, that's true of like all doxing, though. Like, yeah, <laughs> you, <laughs> it's still like yeah. you doing yeah. digging that the person isn't doing, and like exposing them to a really wide audience. Like yeah. a lot of that mm-hmm. stuff is like technically you can find it, but the whole point is that you're like digging and posting it on a public platform. Yeah, whatever. Mm-hmm. And then the the guy who had posted this form was knocking on her her current address in this apartment building like repeatedly. He kept showing up <gasps> to where she lives. <laughs> Yikes! And he was trying to claim that like she doesn't actually live in the district or something. <laughs> but it was uh bordering bordering maybe bordering is the wrong word on stalking behavior but yeah that's creepy it's <laughs> yeah. awful that sounds like stalking behavior why are you yeah. going to her house over and over gross well she kicked his ass in the primary so <laughs> that she did yeah I, I don't know how much of an effect that behavior had on it but she was also like a super fundraiser anyway <laughs> yeah as mentioned on my previous episode I got so many YouTube ads for her, oh, really? even though, yeah, even though I can't vote for her. <laughs> she got 63.5% of the vote and Eddie got 365 So not quite two to one, but not far off. Maybe if he just like been a little bit worse. <laughs> <laughs> like doxing is one thing. Like go, go whole hog. Show up with really... a gun. <laughs> <laughs> He's trying to set the record for uh, how hard he can lose. <laughs> I should have compared the results each time and see like, if he's gotten progressively worse. It's like so funny that it's like circled around to being cool again, and I hope he runs and loses everything for the rest of his life. Like, just please keep doing this. What yeah. is his business? They're developers. Oh, small business the f- owner. The family. <laughs> yeah, they give a ton of money to city council, the Morrow family, to like some of our, our favorite city council folks, mm-hmm. like the Italian Stallion Jumbo. <laughs> Speaking of not living in your district. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, did you know that Mark Shelgren uh, attempted a comeback? Were you aware of I that? I did. Okay. He lost really bad. Uh, not quite as bad as Eddie Morrow lost, but you would think with such like a strong past political career, it would have been very <laughs> easy for Mark Shelgren to win. <laughs> I know he's one of your favorites. Yeah, he's, I love he's Mark Shelgren. Very esteemed. He's a very well educated man. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Although Jeff Jeff Shitley is my favorite now. Hmm. I'm I'm bored of the Sizzler Chicken Man. <laughs> Well, he hasn't done much in a few years now. Yeah. Boring. How sad to come back and lose. <laughs> yeah. Anyone who is not familiar with Chelgren, uh, he's sort of lied about his education and he has a degree from a restaurant 
and he's a ch- he's a chicken man. I don't remember all the details. <laughs> Cause he okay, he dresses up. He dressed up in a costume that included a skirt and chicken balls and like a chicken headdress. You haven't seen the picture. I'll send I have, it to you but again. I don't, you I don't remember the context of why but he has, was doing like, that. Balls dangling out at the bottom of it. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Yeah, why did he do that? I don't remember, but I have not forgotten the chicken suit, so... No, no. I'm pretty sure that was episode art for one of our very early episodes was Mark Chalgren's chicken costume. Mm -hmm. But he was a state senator for like eight years, and I think he just decided not to run again uh, in 2019. And this year, he tried to come back to get into the Iowa House in District 26, running against Austin Harris. It was an open seat, and uh, Harris won about 55 to 45%. So not, I mean, he could have won. It was sort of close. I don't know. In a district that small, it was only about 300 votes apart. Every vote counts. (laughs) Uh, Speaking of Jeff Shitley, Natalie's new favorite, that was kind of an interesting race because... uh, redistricting ended up putting two incumbent state senators against each other and neither of them decided to back off so they ended up running against each other jeff shitley versus joe mitchell and shitley won so unfortunately he is staying in power continuing to be probably our worst state senator (laughs) (laughs) yeah he sucks we're gonna see a lot of him i bet too he's like very much posed for this moment to seize the groomer panic yeah um, he's yeah. gonna have a drag queen bill like oh, immediately man. i'm surprised he doesn't Fuck. have it yet you know he was really on the front lines of that have you guys fucking ever freak. seen yeah no he's fucking worse i hope he does. um have mm-hmm. you guys ever read his official profile on the iowa legislature dot yes website? It's incredible. He, like, has never had a job. (laughs) (laughs) Profession. Yeah, profession is listed as bubbling brine brothers sauerkraut sauerkraut salesman. Then professional advocate. Followed by stand-up comedian. I think we talked about that before. What's a professional advocate? (laughs) It's bullshit. He can't even think of a volunteer position he did. No. Well, he did um, host the Fairfield Oktoberfest wiener dog race. Nice. That's on the government website? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Hobbies include gardening, landscaping, interior design, prayer, meditation, politics, history, economics, and biographies. (laughs) My hobby is biographies. (laughs) Yeah. I think we talked about that before, too. (laughs) Sorry. Yeah. No, I think we talked about it on Twitter. I don't think it was on recording. I, I just remember... One of us saying my hobby is biographies before. <laughs> <laughs> it's because I, I posted a screenshot from this I legislator thing on Twitter, and yeah. then we were all talking about my hobbies as <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Um, it seems a little, it's almost like sacrilegious to list prayer as a hobby, I feel like. <laughs> Like yeah. a hobby? You should be doing it for fun. You should do be doing it for your salvation. It's not to alleviate fun. guilt. Yeah. <laughs> to expunge your sin, you slime puppy. <laughs> slime puppy. We should have a competition to figure out who has the most depraved bio on the Iowa legislature. Oh, that's website. kind of good. I know a good one. I just was looking up. Yeah. Uh, who is it? Sherry Lynn Westrich. Uh, I don't know if we mentioned her on the show, but she is a Republican who is currently in the House, and I guess she is running for a new Iowa Senate district. Uh, but she was the vocalist and backup vocalist and keyboardist for the Rentals, which was... Oh my god, I forgot all about this. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so what is that? The Rentals is a band that was started by Weezer's original bassist, Matt Sharp. Yeah. And they were, they're pretty well known. Like, if you're like a fan of Weezer, you've probably heard of the went- rentals and you're probably, yeah. 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 Uh, Friends of P. <laughs> was, the rentals kick ass. Yeah, they're not bad. Uh, then she went on to, uh, she was on this TV show called Overhauling. Like, she's a car mechanic and apparently she owns some sort of uh, hydraulic clutch pedal manufacturer <laughs> in a tumble. 
<laughs> and uh, so, yeah, she was on this overhaul and show, which I think went on for like a decade. And she was a mechanic uh, featured on it. And then she ended up running for Iowa House of Representatives and winning like just wow. barely. What a life. Yeah. Anyway, probably the most interesting bio of anyone in the <laughs> in the Iowa House, especially the fact that she's like Republican <laughs> and like, yeah, relatively, yeah. Yeah. well, relatively young, I guess. She's Republican 56. musicians are weird. Yeah. Liz Bennett has her occupation listed as website expert. <laughs> Hyphen <laughs> Wix. Are you guys familiar with Wix, the website? Yeah, like, yeah it's just like free. I was yeah. making a rock hard mamas on there. You do not need website you expertise do not need to, need expert to make a website on Wix, on Wix babe. I'm yeah. a WordPress expert. <laughs> yeah. That takes more skill, I would say, than Wix. I'm more of a, I'm a GeoCities veteran. <laughs> I'm a Zanga specialist, actually. Yeah. <laughs> MySpace historian. Here's a connection that, that you'll probably understand. Uh, guess who else is a former member of the Rentals? Maya Rudolph. What? Really? Yeah, yeah. She's in the video for Friends of P, if I remember right. Or maybe it's the video for Waiting, but I'm pretty sure Maya Rudolph's in one of their music videos. I love her. Hmm. I wonder what she and uh, this other lady talked about. She and Cherry Lynn. Yeah, well, there's been a shitload of rentals, so they may not have even overlapped. Uh, oh my goodness, yeah, they have so many. <laughs> like, yeah. They have like 20 <laughs> past members listed on their yeah. Wikipedia Dang. page. Two of, the, oh my- two of the Hayden sisters, daughters of Charlie Hayden, famous j- jazz bassist. Huh. Oh, and yeah, Nick, yeah. Nick Zinner from the uh, Yeah, Yeah, Yeah's is apparently in the current iteration, which is cool. oh, wow, yeah. weird. <laughs> well, they're on rent from other bands. Check out the rentals, everyone. <laughs> yeah. We endorse them. <laughs> uh, Representative Stephen Bradley, his job is listed as dentist slash flight instructor. Nice. Do you think he does that both seems, at the yeah. same time to yeah. save time? He's a, he's a dentist to flight <laughs> instructors. He's a sky dentist. <laughs> sky dentist DS. Yeah. For the pilot who just doesn't have time to make an appointment. <laughs> I'm having too much fun creeping on these uh, representatives. Well, another race that I was paying a little bit of attention to, this was also mentioned in the interview last week, uh, Molly Donahue versus Austin Frerich. Uh, if you listened to our episode 81, we talked about Molly Donahue because she She's had so a, weird. She had a secret Twitter alt. Mm-hmm. That she was using to talk shit about Austin Frerick. <laughs> <laughs> using a bitmoji that <laughs> looks exactly that like, like her. her. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was, was a fun one. Down to like the mole. Yeah, there something. was a mole on her face that dis- was also distinguishing on, feature. Yeah, yeah, also in the bitmoji. <laughs> oh my god, I would do that. I think it's fine. <laughs> I support her. She's a real weirdo in real life, though. I don't like her at all as a person. But really, uh, yeah, she she's, came just, up she's weird. On our uh, digging up dirt on Democrats episode, I think didn't she? Yeah, she's just weird or weirdo. I'm sure you're right, but I don't remember the specifics. I don't remember the specifics either. But <laughs> I, I don't know. I just remember people have talked about her being a uh, very, uh, yeah. She's like a Blue Lives Matter Democrat. I think. Mm, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. Did she? <laughs> That's it's incredible. It's incredible to make a bitmoji that looks just like you and then talk shit about your opponent. I think it's great. <laughs> On an anonymous I think she's a account. Genius. Yeah. 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 And, and it's if you genius. recall, her defense was that was my friend. It wasn't me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which is Which classic. Which is, is very classic. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> my bitmoji looks like Natalie. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, oh Molly gosh. Donahue, uh, she did win against Austin Frerich. Um, See, dirty politics wins. <laughs> yeah. People were influenced by her <laughs> anonymous <laughs> Twitter accounts. <laughs> <laughs> Even though, as Chris told me, uh, Austin raised like $80,000 for this race, which is like Damn. a lot That's more insane. than I would think he would need to lose that race. <laughs> <laughs> he's probably just like money laundering half the time it's just people i don't know yeah 
Well, the race actually hadn't been called yet when I was looking at the results on the Des Moines Register, but Donahue was up by about 150 votes, and Austin had conceded the race on Twitter. So, <laughs> yeah. which is like, come on, he you put that much money into it? <laughs> yeah. He conceded yeah. before he had lost. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> on Twitter. <laughs> That's the only place I saw it. I, I don't, I'm not on like his mailing list or anything, but yeah. I didn't see a statement on his website. I just saw a tweet where he congratulated Molly. I'm t- I'm taking notes. I'm gonna run and I want to run an insane campaign. <laughs> 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 It'd be very cute if like all your supporters had a Bitmoji that looked just like you and like <laughs> constantly talking. That would shit. be so cute. <laughs> oh my god i'm gonna be so insane on twitter if i run for <laughs> <laughs> you should concede like when every the polls day. close yeah every single fucking day <laughs> <laughs> and apologize to your supporters <laughs> this would be a great bit <laughs> to run for office <laughs> <laughs> I feel like because it would be funny is the most pure reason to run. Yeah. And probably why you'd win. Like, straight up. <laughs> yeah. Straight up. <laughs> yeah. I feel like if I went door to door and was like, this is bullshit, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean. And it, and it would be really funny if I won because I would wear sweatpants and swear at them. Like, come on. That would be so funny. You would Wouldn't love you be that. violating the dress code then? <laughs> Are women even allowed to wear pants in the Iowa State House yet? Oh man! <laughs> oh man! <laughs> okay, Eddie Morrow. All right. <laughs> no, I mean seriously, isn't there like a really restrictive dress code there? I remember hearing I don't know. about this. Probably. Oh, this would make me really mad. I don't want to. I worked so hard to like slowly get my boss used to like being more and more casual until I started wearing jeans to work, and I can't do that with the legislature. So yeah. I guess I can't run. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Darn. Darn. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to buy new clothes. Yeah, they probably make you wear like pantyhose or something. Oh my god, yeah. Like and a girdle. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you can't wear sleeveless dresses in the in, in the national legislature. Or at least you couldn't when Paul Ryan was. Oh yeah. You had yeah, to have yeah. your sleeves covered because the reporters would like tape papers on their completely normal <laughs> shoulders. <laughs> oh my god. That looks so much better. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's less distracting than a woman's <laughs> shoulder. <laughs> Jesus. Do you guys remember that I was the class vice president our freshman year of high school? No, really? <laughs> yeah. No, you were. You just reminded me of that when you said the best reason to run is just because it would be funny. And that's basically <laughs> what happened. Yeah. <laughs> Crazy works, you know? You're memorable. <laughs> Crazy is memorable. It's you true. Know? Yeah. So that's why I wonder about those QAnon people, you know? <laughs> like, it seems to be working for them. <laughs> Yeah, Mm -hmm. I was kind of just like, I wanted attention and I was just acting out. I wanted to give a speech on school TV. (laughs) Yeah, I I don't remember this at all. We were friends. I didn't do anything. (laughs) Did you do a speech though? I gave a speech, but then I won. Well, we had like a slate, as weird as that sounds. (laughs) The core four. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. And I, I was the only one from our slate that won. And the rest of the people were like, Eleanor Vernon, I think, was the class president. And it was like her friends running. Mm. And I was the only one who beat that, like, cadre. Hmm. Eleanor Vernon is the the daughter of Monica Vernon, who we mentioned earlier, by the way. She ran for class president every single year and lost every year but that first one. It was so sad. It runs in the family. Some Mm. kind of brain worms (laughs) where they just, it's like, just love humiliation. (laughs) <laughs> so I just have like such a distinct memory of that of my senior I mean like that is so sad Eleanor <laughs> <laughs> they're all really rich and fancy they deserve it it's yeah fine. they're fine yeah they're fine they're fine don't they run a like consulting firm or something anyway like uh, probably I, what's Natalie is what they do graduating even. from Harvard yeah Dang. law yeah I remember they were all involved in Monica's last mayoral campaign mm-hmm what was your speech, Justin? Yeah, I, I can't really remember. It? it was just like self-deprecating and stupid, but people it, it resonated with the voters. <laughs> I would pay anything to see that. Yeah, yeah I mean, you you both probably voted for me. Oh, of course, I voted for you. I absolutely voted for you. I didn't. 
I was in a different class, though. Yeah, Evan's too old to vote for me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't recall anyone. I don't recall any of the people who actually were on mine. I was probably skipping class <laughs> whenever <laughs> they had me vote. The bad boy of Rock Hard Caucus. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Cut I glasses. think Evan's... Evan's second place for a bad boy of Rock Hard Caucus. After Chuck. <laughs> Chuck is the baddest boy. Yeah. He's yeah. Chuck's glasses. Boy. He's cutting podcasts yeah. to this day. Yeah. <laughs> I want to like keep him and insist he's part of the podcast until the day the podcast ends, even though I don't believe he will ever be on again. <laughs> we bring him on for Christmas. Oh, he'll be back. <laughs> As a little treat. He was on the one where we talked about Molly Donahue's Twitter alt. Yes, that's that was his true. most recent appearance. Mm-hmm. He's kind of a, a myth and a legend of the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> He's $20 so funny. to come back on the pod, Chuck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, I did want to say, last time I talked to Eleanor was at our 10-year reunion, and we had a very nice chat, actually. So I am, I am pro-Eleanor Vernon, if she happens to hear this. <laughs> I'm really sorry that I said you were pathetic, Eleanor Vernon. It's just because I'm jealous because you're prettier and richer than me. Like, it's the, one of those situations where, I, like, I'm just genuinely jealous of your life. And so, like, if tiny inconveniences, like losing class president in high school, <laughs> can't exist, that's fine. I'm, like, a fucking loser. And she's, like, rich and has, like, a really hot husband and a huge house. Yeah. Like, it humbled her. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> everybody, everybody needs that kind of experience in high school. I yeah. bet she owns, like, a lot of, like, vineyard vines. Branded clothing today. Like, she's it's doing, good to see I'm sure great. people who will be successful no matter what fail a little bit. Yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think that's what it was. Is just like this bitch is gonna just like they're all going so far no matter yeah. what. They're all like so smart and have so much money. And so just to like see this like tiny thing happen every year mm-hmm. that made her unhappy, I just liked it. So, but I'm sorry, <laughs> Eleanor. <laughs> She seems great. I do it's more like about her, us yes. than you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 for sure. <laughs> I phone banked for her mom, so oh, I really? clearly like, yeah, which That's was funny. like, my heart was not in it though. <laughs> but <laughs> well, she she was also a former Republican, right? I don't remember. It was because I was phone banking for someone else at the same time, and mm. they like wrote me in to like it was like an a group thing. I'm trying to remember who I was actually there for. Whatever, it doesn't matter. Was that when she was running for Congress? That happened, right? No, that was when she was running for mayor. For mayor, okay. You, you. Yeah, she also. That one. Yeah. Oh yeah, she lost many races. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She's one of she those. She ran for. Yeah. yeah, she just <laughs> likes to run for everything, and then. And yes, one of these days she was a Republican. Looks like up until two thousand and nine. Yeah. I thought I remembered that when Obama was elected, huh? Yeah, and. Uh, yeah. She runs, or whatever, it's Vernon Research Group. Right. Um, yes, which does, like, market research and consulting. Boo. Boo. Boring. <laughs> Evil. It, she's not a dentist flight instructor? Well, yeah. I don't fucking care, then. Yeah. <laughs> she does some other bullshit. You're not even any cool, not. like, uh, indie bands or anything? <laughs> 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 so I have the contributions for Austin Bath, but I didn't yes. do a ton of research. I had really good intentions of like doing a lot and like breaking down a bunch of stuff. And I like really like as justice for Jalen because I just love him so much. Mm-hmm. I wanted to have all this like research to present about why this is such bullshit. But I've just been like absolutely slammed with other projects. So I don't have a ton, but I'll tell you a couple facts about the like money bullshit with Austin. Yeah. Which it's like horseshit of you, House District 36. You're trash. Um, I hate 80% <laughs> of you. How could you ever do this? Like, he is the greatest person I know, and I think you're, like, stupid pieces of shit. So... Yeah. At least... Yeah. I mean, by the, by the numbers, uh, it's about 4,000 certified dipshits in Iowa House <laughs> District 36. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone who voted for anyone else is a massive loser. Yeah. (laughs) 
<laughs> I was so sad when he lost. And then he was so sad, like, when he posted his – he had, like, a really great concession message. And he, like, promoted yeah. all – like, I, yeah, I thought that was really, really good. But, like, him being sad made me so much sadder. Like, oh, it was just a rough night. That – just like Justin, that was the only race I really fucking cared about. Yeah. Just because he's like such a good person. And so it's really hard to see like someone who is he that cared good. about it. It was mm-hmm. a grassroots campaign. Like that was the thing. They were like engaging all kinds of voters. And just the fact that he got outspent by somebody yeah. else. You know, Some it wasn't cornball like, doctor. Yeah. Jalen was the better candidate all around. Definitely. It's like, it's really. I don't know, like, I I don't ever want to sound condescending, but, like, in, like, a five- or six-way race to come in second and, like, be that much of an underdog money-wise is incredible. And, like, I I think it's really cool and, like, proves that, like, his message is not a losing message. And, like, okay, so the bullshit that's in his disclosures is his family gave him, like, a ton of fucking money. And that just, like, makes me so angry, like, thinking about Jalen's background and where he comes from. And, like, he comes from, like, like, his family is not able to give him $12,000 to run his, like, little campaign. Like, his total family money was $12,775, just base money. Which is yeah. crazy. That's almost like Bates what Jalen raised all together. Bath bucks. Yeah. <laughs> 36 of the contributions he got were of $500 or more. Which is just like <sighs> an enormous amount of money to just yeah. be able to drop on a house race. Like How much did you say? 36 people gave $500 or more. Okay. Yeah. For, yeah, for an Iowa legislature race. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, crazy. Like just awful rich people for, for a primary not even like a real election for a yeah. primary yeah. 13 contributions just from family mostly his parents and in-laws and as someone with parents that i'm kind of estranged from that makes me better um, <laughs> does his family live here just out of curiosity i can tell you when you run natalie how much money do your parents have to donate to your campaign <laughs> to get back <laughs> in your life yeah to, to win you over <laughs> To buy the relationship with you back. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Think about it. Yeah. Come up with a good number. You know. <laughs> My dad's great. My mom's going to have to give a lot more than $7,000. <laughs> um, sh- okay. Sharon Baith, his mom lives at on <laughs> Des Moines. Okay. So, parent, uncle. Yeah, they, they live here. Oh, and his dad lives in Irvindale. They're divorced. <laughs> Broken home. <laughs> he comes from a broken home. Do we really trust the child of divorce? <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Jalen should have gone after that hard. He you know, like <laughs> a child of a broken home. I can imagine the, the campaign ad are your parents divorced? <laughs> <laughs> Why should a man whose parents are divorced tell you what to do? <laughs> he couldn't even keep his family together. <laughs> oh, 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 God. What's his attachment style? Unlikely that it's healthy. <laughs> How can he work across the aisle when he couldn't even keep his parents from splitting up? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> He has, uh, like, like all these massive contributions from his family, and then his mother-in-law gave him $25 four times. <laughs> Maybe so he was, sad. like, mowing her lawn, and every time they <laughs> yeah. did it, he got 25 bucks. Which is, like, that doesn't seem like enough. Maybe I'm, like, spoiled by the Rob Sand in-laws, but, like, here's 25 bucks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine, like, I don't know anyone who has $7,000 they could just write themselves a check for to start a vanity campaign. Yeah. That's so much money. Yeah, Like, that's imagine crazy. having that much money, let alone just, like, I don't know, like, yeah. <laughs> that you can just write a check to yourself. Like, here's $7,000, like, go run your little campaign. It's it's bullshit. It's trash. I hate him. 
he's such a fucking loser. His, like, <laughs> Facebook is so fucking corny. And it's just, like, the most, like, moderate schlop and, like, posting pictures with voters. And he always door knocks and scrubs, which is, like, <sighs> some... Oh, that's no. Like, that's so lame. <laughs> that's <laughs> awful. He always wears his... He always wears his scrub pants and his little badge. <gasps> Like just You're, you know, I'm a doctor. Is, I just got off duty. So yeah. Repulsive. Yeah, I'm still sorry. Sorry, I got blood on me still. <laughs> I just came blood. from the OR. <laughs> oh man. Oh my god. <laughs> is uh is Nixon Lordson on his list of donors? Okay, so this is the thing I was looking for. Is I yeah. wanted to try and find because I know Rob Sand is propping him up and working behind the scenes for him. Mm-hmm. Um, the problem is, is that the like contributions are really difficult to search. So I don't think so. I would imagine that is the kind of thing that like Rob Sand would tell him not to do because he like wouldn't like the appearance of that because he supposedly mm. wasn't taking sides, even though he was like. <laughs> secretly securing endorsements for him and stuff. Um, so I didn't see any Nixon money jumping out at me. But, I mean, we have Tom Riley family money. But, yeah, no, nothing jumped out on me financially, but it is a little bit hard to do the control F with these. So, I don't know. If I had more time, I could tell you better. You mean because it's on paper? It's hard to control F a physical... Like, no, because it's not it like a spreadsheet. It's like, it's like... <laughs> okay, I like <laughs> there it's split up into a bunch of them. So they do like yeah. a bunch of different disclosures and you so you have to go to each one yeah. and like try and search it that way and it's like Ugh. I don't know. So I was looking for Lords and Money. I had that same question. I believe it's there somewhere, but um it isn't like actually disclosed, but that seems like the kind of thing that Rob Sand would like be really serious about not having the appearance of like yeah. choosing favorites, even though he's secretly choosing favorites. Are there any donations yeah. from Beach Bum? <laughs> 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 Spelled it W O R A P L M. See if that's yeah. in there. If you have any, anyone has any leads, <laughs> let's dox this person. <laughs> let's dox this private citizen on our podcast. <laughs> there's a guy, there's a lady or guy, lady for sure, right? Um, who always <laughs> harasses us about like what a King Rob Sand is named Beach Bomb. And if you know who it is, we've been trying to figure it out. We thought it was yeah. his wife. We but... have some theories because they obviously uh, went yeah. to law school. Yeah. Yes. And they went to law they school went to in Harvard. the Boston area. Yeah. And they call themselves a liberal. <laughs> but they spend all this time on Twitter like defending conservatives and like the Federalist Society and yeah shit. they were like yeah. um, there. someone was like if you're uh, in law school don't go to any Federalist Society events and then they posted yeah. like uh, well, actually, they give the best events with like the best food. So, like, <laughs> and it's a really good networking opportunity. So, like, it's kind of like silly for you to ask that. Because, uh, like, obviously, you know, lawyers don't have any like ethical qualms about, you know, getting a, a nice dinner from someone they Star. disagree with. <laughs> Oh, the other thing I was going to point out is that Austin got a ton of out-of-state money. This is what I was looking I, for. Yeah, I would spend, I what I wanted to do is spend time like going through and Googling everyone, which is what I did on the city council ones, but it's really yeah. time-consuming. Yeah, but we've, sure. got par- we've got Parker, Colorado. Um, we have Oklahoma. Um, we have Chicago, Washington, D.C., Pennsylvania. Money from Chicago and DC. Aust- Austin, oh. Texas. Tucson, Arizona. And these are these people are not family. They have to disclose that they're family. Mm-hmm. So Arkansas, Wisconsin, Lone Tree, Colorado. Just like what is all this money for? I mean, this is a lot of Naperville, a lot of out of state money for like a local race like this, Nashville, Tennessee, for it to not be people who are related to you. Because I look at these a lot, and like it's usually like if out of state money comes in, it says it's like your aunt, you know? Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. Atlanta, Georgia, Portland, Oregon, Parker, Colorado, Avarda, Colorado. For an Iowa House primary, he had a fifty state strategy. Yeah. <laughs> $500 from Katona, New York, New Haven, Connecticut, Brooklyn, New York. What the fuck? Why? Like, who is this? You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. New Haven is Rochester, a source of Minnesota. great evil, too. Yeah. St. Augustine, Florida, <laughs> Denver, St. Cloud, Florida. 
I noticed a lot of Florida money. Probably developers. You know what else is in Florida? Scientology. Donald Trump's mar a lago <laughs> <laughs> um, Duluth, more Tennessee. Just like, why are all these people giving money to us? It's just really odd. Mm-hmm. Got a lot of friends. He's just really popular. <laughs> yeah. Like, like Chris said when I was talking to him, the IDP needs whoever is sitting in District 36 yeah. to be like a huge fundraiser for them. So I'm guessing these people have connections to the Democratic Party. Yeah. Like octopus, you know. He yeah. was probably Dallas, on Texas. some, like, one of those emails you get from, you know, whatever Democrat pack like Mm -hmm. this house this guy's running the house in iowa and he's like can you chip in three dollars like that kind of (laughs) thing or i wouldn't be surprised if he just had a lot of friends from like medical school who are also obviously having a lot of disposable income guys Mm -hmm. maybe it's all the patients he saved yeah i mean (laughs) (laughs) what does he even do i don't know i don't know i feel like he's probably some kind of bullshit doctor let's find (laughs) out What do you, what doctor are What's you? What's the most with? bullshit doctor? Yeah, let's rank the doctor types. What's oh. the worst kind of oh, doctor? I gotta tell you what the most bullshit doctor is. <laughs> the most bullshit doctor is the doctor I saw this week to get my medical marijuana card. <laughs> <laughs> if he was one of those, he would be way cooler, though. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that, absolutely. It's called, it's called Presto Doctor. Presto. And, oh, nice. Where do you practice? Sorry, did you, University of this Iowa This is important Hospital for our listeners. Presto, yeah. babe. Yeah. So, and this literally was a one-minute phone call with this woman that she asked me three questions. And it was incredible. Like, she didn't even ask, like, my name or, like, it was just, like, are you pregnant? Like, what kind of pain are you having? Does it get worse then? Okay, done. That was it. That it's such bullshit. And then, no, but it cost $150. So it's like a scam. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Obviously, everyone's making money from this because then you have to, like, pay to get the card and stuff, too. Like, yeah. it's. Mm-hmm. You can do that with ADHD meds, too. Like, but oh, yeah. can you imagine if in 30 seconds to one minute you made $150? <laughs> Like, that's the kind of doctor I want to be. Yeah. I'm going to be a medical marijuana scam artist. Yeah. <laughs> this is such bullshit. Well, that's better than an Oxycontin believe. scam artist. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Is, too. No, I think it's fun. I think it's great. I was just, like, thinking about what I was going to say to, like, convince them, and it was not like that. They didn't it was, give a she fuck. She didn't even... Yeah. Did not give a fuck. She didn't even look up at me. She didn't introduce herself. She was just like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make my $150 as quickly as possible. Yep. And she had already sent me over the approval to the card before we were done talking. That rocks. Wow. People she just say presses a button like, and it's done. American healthcare This is the is most broken? useful information no. on this pod. Yeah, for real. <laughs> Listen. If you want to get a medical marijuana card and you live in the Des Moines area, it is so easy. DM me. I am I am so happy. Um, I got a vape. I'm so excited. And it's like, it's super easy. The place is called, and also the pharmacy is now called Bud and Mary's, which I is just that. like, you're not even trying <laughs> to like be a doctor. <laughs> okay. Oh, he's an internal medicine, so yeah. he's like a family doctor. That's kind of legit, but that... That's one of the harder ones. So internal mental medicine takes even more... Like, it's not, it's just not just, like, family matter primary care. You have to, like, know a lot about diseases in adults, like diabetes and those... Um, I think there's advanced training you have to do to be an internist. Mm-hmm. But this... On health grades, he has two... One star reviews. Yes, I was hoping you noticed. Um, one from someone named Justin. Oh. <laughs> and it says, he just doesn't seem to have medical skills to provide that best medical advice. He seemed to discriminate against people with different disabilities. Um, mm. What could Sounds be, like a doctor. What could be improved? Yeah. <laughs> Didn't listen. Didn't explain conditions well. Staff wasn't friendly. Appointment was rushed. Yeah. Yeah. So don't go to Dr. Bath if you... Or maybe, maybe go, you know. <laughs> I don't, I don't want to get sued. He's got deep We're pockets. Slander, slander yeah. territory. <laughs> the, uh, the other one-star review is interesting, too. Uh, it's anonymous. No name attached to it. It says, he doesn't know how to practice medicine. 
His unity point attorney <laughs> says I can do anything I want. <laughs> <laughs> That's interesting. <laughs> well, if a lawyer and a doctor are telling you that, like, mm-hmm. you should. You you can. <laughs> yeah. That's a green light. Yeah. Do it. Anything. He, uh, I really, I really, really hate him. <laughs> he has a, a real, like, Nazi look, too. Yeah. He's got some Google it's reviews, very too. Very Aryan. Mm-hmm. He looks David, like a doctor. From David yeah. Stanley, you are a joke of a doctor, and you know it. <laughs> <laughs> Playing politics over your patients is despicable. I thought, I thought people from Iowa were decent, hardworking types. You give them oh, a bad man. name. Shame wow. on you. <laughs> Is that just because he ran as a Democrat? Or? <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I think so. <laughs> oh, this is a, so we should read um, a, a positive one for balance, for fair and balance. Yeah. So here's a five star one. My husband and I both love the way Dr. Bath is in his clinic. <laughs> so it's like, like they're happy he's this, like physically in there <laughs> yeah and that counts as two reviews because it's her and her husband yeah oh yeah <laughs> they both they both love the way that he is there yeah <laughs> he, he, he's, he's he there. is there yeah <laughs> that's what they will say and i bet the uh, i bet the other negative review is the one who is mad that he like recommended they get a vaccine or something he's like bringing <laughs> politics bringing politics into yeah, it yeah yeah <laughs> yeah, it says it's a year ago. I don't know when he announced, but it could have been a vaccine thing too. There's other nice ones, but we're not gonna fucking read those. Are you kidding? Like, <laughs> no. yeah, that's he's no a fun. loser. Yeah. He's a loser. Okay, but the other person is a loser is fucking Shannon. And yeah, I didn't know anything about her. Shannon got clobbered by Jalen, which we love. We <laughs> love to see it. Um, she is garbage. <laughs> For anyone who has not seen me really be really bad at her on Twitter, she had um, noted sex criminal Ed Valen endorse yeah. her and oh, then host it, okay. it was that a lady. fundraiser. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, and hosted a fundraiser at his house. And <laughs> sorry, I found one more review. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Natalie. I got distracted by the chat because it says, oh, where to even start here? If I could remove even this one star, I could. You have never been a good provider to me. The last experience I had on July 2nd, 2021 was absolutely horrid. I came to you in excruciating pain and explained to you I was injured pretty bad and you dismissed me and made me feel like a small, worthless animal. Wow. Dang. That is harsh. Uh. (laughs) Man. This came from one of the nippers. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Anyway, he was fired from the Sierra Club for sexually harassing a local activist yeah. who is really cool. I really like her. Yeah, and she reported it, and they, like, found that it was credible, and they yep. stood behind her, and it was, like, in the news. He's a creep, and he's this isn't his only. No, Serial knows this. Serial, like, goes to liberal or leftist places kind of guy and, like, preys on young, vulnerable uh, women yeah. and gets them when they're under the influence of substances and makes them feel like he can help them with their political careers, that kind of thing. He's yep, really disgusting. Creepy. Yeah, you can find disgusting. information about it. Just like a easy Google search. Yeah, just yeah. look up Ed Ed Fallon, Iowa, Ed Fallon, sexual harassment, whatever. I mean um, but sorry, go ahead. I was just gonna say it's a big red flag that he's got a radio show and podcast named <laughs> the Fallon Forum. Like <laughs> come on, man. Yeah. That's he um talked about Jalen on his fucking radio show, show too. It made me so mm-hmm. mad. I sent it to you. I said that you oh, specifically had was, to listen to it. Yeah, yeah, it was that day that I was working and I forgot to go back to it. So now that you've it's told gonna me make you so on mad. the show, I will make a note of that. <laughs> <laughs> I totally forgot about that. Now that it's, it's gonna, irrelevant. <laughs> yeah, it's I know. It's going to make yeah. you so- 
It's going to make you specifically so mad. Um, he talks smack about Jalen for being an absolute king um, and confronting Cindy Axney about being a, like, bootlicker. And mm-hmm. he was like, I would never heckle a fellow Democrat like that. Now, I, you know, I've, I've, again, I've done a lot of a, a lot of activism of all types, but I've never heckled anybody. I, I just don't, I don't, I don't understand why that seems to make any sense, but. Just like disgusting. So he's a dirtbag. Um, Heather told me, Heather, I'm not going to say her last name just in case it's in the news, but she was yeah, yeah. Um, the, the victim and she messaged me on Twitter and said that she reached out to Shannon before the event and asked if she could meet with her and tell her the story yeah. before she held it. And then mm-hmm. Shannon pretended she didn't see it, even though her little icon on Facebook mm-hmm. dropped down that shows, you know, how the icon <laughs> yeah. will show you that someone's yeah. read it. So she read it. She held the event anyway and then messaged her afterwards and said, yes, I'd like to speak with you. Oh my so God. she fucking knew. Oh, man. She knew. And Manny from Twitter, um, they are disabled and messaged Shannon and asked if it was going to be accessible, knowing fully well that it wasn't going to be, but seeing if she was going to lie. Because yeah. um, they said they always check those things ahead of time because they're so tired of being told something's accessible and then having someone yeah. carry their chair over a crack, which is like so disrespectful. Mm-hmm. It's like, that's a part of your body. You don't want to be carried. Yeah. And Shannon was like, oh, yeah, it's totally wheelchair accessible. And when I got there, and I because I, I protested there. I took a picture of the front and back, and the back is a spiral staircase, and the front has stairs up to steps. <laughs> just like, there is, it is literally, she was lying and 100% just going to offer to carry him up the stairs. Oh, my God. Like, and it's as many stairs as possible. A spiral <laughs> like, staircase is, like, aggressively <laughs> non-accessible. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can barely get up those. <laughs> And it's like, it's a fundraiser at someone's individual house. Like, people will be understanding if it's not accessible, but don't Don't lie lie about about it. it. (laughs) Jesus. Mm -hmm. So, um, we went there with signs that were like, Ed Fallon's a sexual harasser. Shannon refused to talk to us. So she knew ahead of time because Heather tried to tell her. And, um, Emmanuel also told her. And then during, she refused to come out and talk to us about like, why are you here? Yeah. And Ed Fallon's wife came out and told us she was going to sue us <laughs> and call the cops. And she supports our right to protest, but that we are libelous and breaking <laughs> the law so they're all freaks and she has like a like billboard that's on the back of a truck that she was driving around which is like so stupid um she is trash and i'm so excited she lost i hate her <laughs> uh being endorsed by ed fallon should completely sink your campaign yes. so i'm glad that yes. she didn't and win it, <laughs> it did and she seems like the kind of person who would like really hold a grudge about us having protested there and that makes me really happy yeah like that I know she was really mad about it and it like lives rent free in her head. <laughs> she reached out to Jalen and they were like, stop having your supporters harass us. And Jalen was like, this has nothing to do with me. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. like why? Like why would, is he surprised that people are going to keep bringing it? Like, it's not going to go away. Yeah. You can't just like, but he came out, he came out with a letter signed by multiple women. That's oh, he's yeah. cool. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> no, he claim now he's claiming that she assaulted him. Yeah, yeah. It's this like the Johnny which Depp. Is, yeah, the Darvo, <laughs> the Darvo approach. <laughs> like, no, actually it was me who was assaulted. Oh my gosh. Yeah, disgusting. Disgusting garbage. So we're so glad that she lost and Jalen beat her by a mm-hmm. lot. Didn't someone yell at you too? Like, we support Johnny Depp while you were protesting yeah. a serial oh sexual harasser. <laughs> Wow. Yeah. It just like goes to show like how much that is going to be like a bizarre rallying cry for like things that are completely unrelated. I was like, oh, this song actually isn't about Johnny Depp. Yeah. This one's about Ed Fallon. This is the the Des Moines Johnny Depp protest. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. There's people mobilizing all across the country, (laughs) protesting the court decision. <laughs> That's what we're really all up in arms about right now. Oh my gosh. <laughs> she like his his wife was like 
I swear to God, I had the time of my life. No one else that was with me, I think, wanted to be in that uncomfortable of a situation. <laughs> but I just, like, really thrive in it. And, like, I was having so much fun. Because she kept being like, I just want you to know that, like, I could call the cops on you. And I'm not going to support – I support your right to protest, but I want you to know that I could. And I just kept being like, call the fucking cops! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Or she'd be like, this is actually slanderous and libelous. I just want you to know. Like, I support your speech, but this is libel. And I was like, so sue me, you dumb bitch. Like, yeah. <laughs> I was like, I was in my element. I love being places where awful people are really upset at me. And there's like a really hostile energy. I was like really feeding off of it. And I was like with a group of people who are like really kind and like not the kind of people who like to be confrontational like that. (laughs) But I was like, I know I felt bad, but I was like, I had printoffs of the news articles and everyone who came in, I pretended I was like part of it and just walked up and handed it to them so that they had to be (laughs) fucking (laughs) rocks. That fucking rock. There's, oh, man. There's the, like, one narrow little entrance through the front garden, so everyone had to, like, talk to me first. There was not an alternative yeah. entrance. <laughs> <laughs> That's so cool, Natalie. Every wow. nice group of, like, peaceful protesters needs someone there who's just, like, going to be a fucking bulldog. <laughs> <laughs> that rock. <laughs> I just, like, I just, like, really feed off of it. Yeah. Like, yeah. I just, like, feed off this vile white lady coming out to, like, like speak out for her husband and the candidate. Neither of us right. have the what balls the to come out that? and talk Empty to you. Empty threats. It's also literally <laughs> yeah. not libel. Libel is, like, no, no. public. Unless, you, unless the statement that you the printed out is <laughs> considered libel, even though it's, like, two yeah. years old, they would have sued yeah. if it was libel, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. The, yeah. It's not like it's I even winnable. I wrote on the sign stuff that was in the news like it was in the newspaper i can't be charged with libel because i'm just writing what i read in the news like yeah that's crazy and also she tried to claim that you aren't allowed to protest on the sidewalk if you're not moving they try to do that to union people sometimes like pickets Mm -hmm. that's 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 crazy so our argument i guess was that we needed i was like do you want to walk around in this one square like what like (laughs) Yeah. What do you yeah. want from me? This this is not going to help. I'm just going to do something twice as annoying. Like, I need to understand <laughs> yeah. that this is not going to be an effective strategy. <laughs> like, you think you'll just get me to walk up and down the sidewalk and things will be better? Like, mm-hmm. And do you really want to call the cops and bring more attention? Yeah, <laughs> like, for real. It would be so funny if they called the cops and then there was pictures. Because one of my things says endorsed by a sexual harasser or whatever. <laughs> like, just like. Or why did she yeah. accept his endorsement and then mm-hmm. it's on the newspaper because you decided to call the cops about it? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. But I was just like, call them. Are you going to call them or not? Like, <laughs> <laughs> Calling or bluff. It's a, it's an awesome energy. I'm made for it. I'm going to Sydney Axney's event tomorrow and I'm going to bring that same energy. Um, she does not, it is not open. It's a fundraiser. So you have to pay to no. get in. But. I'm I'm not gonna pay to get in. I'm gonna stand outside and hoot and holler. Yeah. Go hot go wild. Hot wild. Swing, a- <laughs> Swing a PlayStation 2 controller around a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was gonna say. <laughs> Very disrespectful. <laughs> Disgusting behavior. Um Well, I think we covered the all the important news about last week's primary. I think everyone who listens to the show is very well informed now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. For, for sure. <laughs> we barely know who won. Yeah. <laughs> and we're like a politics. We podcast. didn't even mention the Think an Hour uh, oh, debacle. Right. Oh yeah. I mean, we've already kind of covered it. She we kind of we kind of called that one. <laughs> yeah. We did talk about her signatures thing back when that happened. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, Admiral Mike Franklin. He's going up against Mike uh, Franklin. Mike Franklin. Franklin. It's Frank. It's Franken, Franken, you guys. You think I'm doing that oh, by accident? Oh, it's a bit. <laughs> <laughs> Cut that out. Just say yeah. Mike Franklin forever. <laughs> Mike Franklin versus uh, fuck Astley, as I've dubbed him. <laughs> I, I believe like that Franken Hour. That's good. Franken Hour. Um, I don't know if you guys have seen those signs that are like way too long. I believe Mike Franken can beat Chuck Grassley. Have you seen those? I think it says Admiral, doesn't it? They're Probably. too long. They're yeah, they love that shit. 
Anyway, I don't think we should forget how poorly ran Abby Finkenauer's campaign was. I yeah. didn't realize this, but I saw after the election that she had made an ad that was saying, I'm going to term limit myself. I'm only going to run <laughs> for two consecutive terms, and then I'm going to quit because I'm going to be able to get stuff done during those two terms. And it's like, <laughs> what? Is, who is this supposed to appeal to? Yeah. I, I, it's literally just like, her whole campaign is like literally just... I am the opposite of Chuck Grassley. Yeah. Man. On all the Woman. superficial, Old, meaningless. Young. Like, uh, yeah. <laughs> be in the Senate forever. Running, f- never being be in forever. the Senate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Chuck Grassley. I mean, she did kind of term limit herself. She did kind of term limit herself in the House of Representatives as well. <laughs> yeah, it's true. I will be in the Senate for zero years. Yeah. <laughs> Is she lactose intolerant? Could she not eat Dairy Queen? Because that would be... <laughs> yeah. I hope not. Maybe we'll do an episode about Franken, but he seems pretty boring. Yeah, he's just a fucking... He's a psycho. Yeah, we he's can an dig imperialist. into his military career, maybe. Yeah, we should like talk about AFRICOM or whatever, because I think it's really important. Mm-hmm. For so, sure. So, he, he is like involved in imperialism in Africa. It's really disgusting. Ugh. It's like nauseating. Oh, I should mention, um, Grassley had a primary opponent, uh, Jim Carlin, who got about like 25% or something of the primary, which is oh, wow. uh, losing pretty badly, yeah. but significant, I guess, against a, a titan like, yeah, <laughs> like Grassley. <yeah. laughs> An institution. I don't think that 25% is enough of a primary challenge to really signify any like potential loss in the general, but... It shows that there's a, oh seg- a segment of Republicans that don't like Grassley. That's all it really shows. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. It's like wild to me that there are people who are pretending that it's possible that he could lose. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let alone like believing it's believing in him. I don't know. Just like why? I believe in him. <laughs> you believe yeah. in him? I believe he can go the distance. <laughs> <laughs> He is, um, he is like an absolute psycho. He's like a serial killer. Yeah. <laughs> did you see today he he challenged uh, Grassley to go to a shooting range with <laughs> yeah, him? Yeah, he did. And oh, see the true power like, of an AR-15. Yeah, he's like, come to a shooting range and let me show you how easy it is to do a mass shooting. Like, what the fuck are you talking yeah. about? <laughs> he's like, you can fire 30 rounds and then with a little bit of training, reload and fire another 30. It's like... Who the f- again? Who the fuck is this supposed to appeal to? <laughs> I listen. I'm. Gosh. I've shot many guns. <laughs> I'm the I'm real sure, shooter in the race. I'm pretty sure Grassley is aware of. <laughs> like, it's just. I mean, obviously, it's like a publicity stunt. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, it's so fucking stupid. I feel like if Grassley picked up an AR-15 and tried to shoot it, he would like go off the ground. <laughs> yeah, like, like his whole body would just like fly into the air. Yeah, and flap around. <laughs> He'd have to go the- to the hospital. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's wild that he's still alive. Although, all that dairy, he probably has pretty strong bones. Oh, true. <laughs> oh, you're going okay. I wasn't quite sure where you were going. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know if you were going for gas. Yeah, like but or like he might shit he... himself. <laughs> <laughs> He's so constipated, oh, he'll man. stay on the ground. <laughs> He's weighed down with shit. <laughs> He's denser, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure his bones are, are very strong. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> He's denser than he looks. <laughs> well, that's all the coverage that we need to do, I think. So, um, <laughs> uh, Natalie, I think you had something you wanted to plug, right? Yeah. So, um, there are some events coming up. Some reproductive rights folks in Iowa have planned to do a response to Roe the day it comes out. So um, we are just like, in order to get it 
to the event to go about that fast. We're telling people about it now and just know the day the row is overturned, we will be posting on social media. Any one of the mutual aids are like posting about the event. Mm -hmm. Um, You can find it from IAA. IAAF, um, Jane Collective will post about it. So just like anyone that you follow, just go there and take a look the day of the decision if you want to do something that day. Um, and we will be hosting an event where we'll have speakers and we'll give you a ton of action items so you leave feeling like here's a like thing that I can go and do right now instead of being told to vote, which is what everyone else is going to do, and that's useless. <laughs> So we have that. And then the Iowa Jane Collective is putting on an abortion to doula training in July for anyone who wants to take it. Um, an abortion doula is a support person for someone going through an abortion similar to like a childbirth doula. But we are putting on a public training that people can go to um, so they can get trained to support the people in their life. And that is going to be July 9th from 12 to 4. And we'll have the show account retweet the sign up link when we have it. Yeah. We will. So, yeah, events coming up. <laughs> yes. I would like to ask you to visit our website, rockhardcock.us. And if you are if you make music, if you're like a local musician, send us some music to put at the end of the show. But today, we're probably going to go out with the beautiful sounds of the rentals. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thanks, everyone, for listening. And thank you, as always, to Evan, Stella, and Natalie for providing just important news coverage and commentary yeah. on the very important elections that happened last week. <laughs> You're very welcome, sir. Yeah.